Welcome to another edition of Trailer Gourmet. My name is John High Street, and we are going to make Plumber's Rhubarb Strawberry Pie. And I'll tell you why it's named that in a while. First, let's go over our ingredients. This is something we lay out, just so that you know you have everything. We've got uh, juice over here from a grapefruit, half a little over half a grapefruit. And that juice will be added to something or other. I'll figure that out later. Flour for the dough, that's three cups. Uh, third cup of shortening, half cup of brown sugar, and six tablespoons of butter. I've got a tablespoon of ground ginger and cinnamon mixed together because it's easier. This is a shot of Tennessee honey whiskey. That's going to go with the rhubarb. This is a shot of Kahlua, kind of, well, white Russian. We'll just call it white Russian. That's for the dough, because that's what you do. And I think Julia Childs would appreciate that. Egg is for the glazing on the dough crust later. A little bit of salt, and here's the rhubarb. Here's the strawberries, which we're gonna cut up in a bit. And here's a bowl for mixing that in. Let's begin. So as you can see, we're simply going to add the flour and salt. So what we'll do is we'll sort of sift it. I've never found this to be that critical. A pinch of salt. I use sea salt just because it has a little more panache. And then do that. Just give it a nice little toss around. Whee. Then we add the other goodies. Third cup of shortening. The butter, lots of butter. Oh, this is organic. First, let's get this mixed up. This will take a few minutes. We'll get it all ready. And it'll be a most beautiful, delicious thing. All right, hold that thought. <clears throat> okay, so once you get the uh, dough mixture to a nice crumbly mixture, for lack of a better word, then you can add, now usually you would add cold water <clears throat> to make it into a dough, but we're going to use a white Russian mix because it's going to actually add a lot of flavor to the dough, and I highly recommend doing so. So this is a little over, so what we do is we'll start off by using just a little bit, work it in, get it to the right doughy consistency, and if we need more, we'll add more. So we'll add about half of that, and we'll mix it up. I know we're gonna need a little more, I can just tell. Depends on climate too, so it depends on where you are. You might need more, you might need less. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need more. So I ended up using about two thirds, just about two thirds of a cup of the white Russian mix in order to get the consistency correct. There are many different ways to make a crust and I found that this method is actually pretty tasty but you can do the conventional method if you wish, or just look up on Google to see exactly what kind of crust you want. Anyway, it worked out pretty well and I thought the flavor was rather nice. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna chill this in the fridge for about a half hour. And while it's chilling, we'll cut up the other goodies and get everything else prepared. So, we'll see you in a few minutes. No, actually, we'll see you in about two seconds because that's the joy of editing. There we go. Nice dough. We'll wrap it in saran wrap so it's extra good. Dough. Hi, so what we've done now is I've taken the strawberries and I've cored them. And it's important to core the strawberries because the inside is Satan's Valley and we don't want that in our rhubarb pie, plumber's rhubarb pie, mind you. 
So what we do is we take the rhubarb that we cut and washed and cut it into, you can do one inch, half inch, nine sixteenths, eleven sixteenths, three quarters of an inch, doesn't really matter. Uh, I go a little shorter because I like the consistency better, so anyway. You can use whatever knife you'd like, it doesn't really matter, as long as you cut properly you won't have any problems. Rhubarb will reduce considerably when you put it in the pan. So, for instance, in a nine inch pan, I'm using about a pound, a little over a pound of rhubarb. If you're going to use more than that, then I suggest going up to two pounds. Uh, and that'll still fit in a nine inch pan. I'm also cutting the strawberries a little thin, and I'm going to leave some of the strawberries left over so that I can use them on the top of the pie when I'm done. I also prefer using a butcher's knife for all of my uh, cutting purposes. It has a nice flat blade which makes it easy to scoop things into the pan and I also like to try to keep it pretty sharp so I sharpen it pretty much every time I use it. Pretty. Now that uh, grapefruit juice, you can use an orange, that's fine too. I use grapefruit juice because it's a nice fun tart. Tart, tartier? Yeah. We add that in. Now we, what we're going to do is we're going to bring that to a boil. If we can get the stove to light. There we go. We'll bring that to a boil. And after it comes to a boil, we're going to turn it down and let it simmer for three, four minutes. The goal here is to get it soft. And then after that's done, we're going to let it cool a little bit. We'll add the brown sugar and we'll get our pie dough thing ready so that we can actually put that in the pie. So we'll see you in a second. And I almost forgot, at this point, while it's simmering in the last couple of minutes while it's getting soft, we add the whiskey to it. Just like so. Give it a nice stir. Ooh, softening up nicely. Oh, it's starting to smell like rhubarb pie already. Mm -mm. Plumber's rhubarb pie, that is. All right, I'm going to let that go because I can tell it's still a little... I want it so that when it bakes, it's actually pretty soft. So I'm gonna let that go for just another couple of minutes. Then we'll let it cool, add the brown sugar, like I said, and some of the seasoning, and get our pie dish ready. Okay, so it's all simmered, it's all ready to go, but what happened was it got a little juicy. So there's a lot of water in the rhubarb. So it's totally fine, totally fine, because you don't want the pie to just run out all over the place. It's totally fine to take it. Oh, it smells like heaven and strain it. Do that. It does reduce quite a bit, so keep that in mind. Back in the pan with you. Doesn't look pretty, but it's going to taste marvelous. So we'll let that cool down a little bit, and now we'll get our dye, our, our, we'll let that cool down a little bit and get our dough ready. All right, so now you're wondering why is this called Plumber's Rhubarb Strawberry Pie? I know why it was. And I came up with that creative name because, well, I don't know where the rolling pin is. I have no idea where it is. Someone got it and some travel along the way. However, I do have this wonderful two inch, no, inch and a half PVC pipe that I used for something or other. <clears throat> which I'm going to use as a rolling pin, hence the name. So what I've done is cut the dough, the big ball of dough, into two thirds and a third piece, one for the top and one for the, one for the thing at the bottom. And what we'll do is we'll roll that up. Sprinkle a little bit of flour, like so. Can I get a basic shape going? I'm gonna try to roll it out pretty thin, but not too thin. There's a fine balance between using too much flour and not enough. You don't want it to stick to the counter or the surface in which you're rolling it on, and you don't want to put too much in it so that it actually disturbs the actual consistency of the dough. As you can see, I, I could have used a little bit more underneath it. And this is a little more fragile than your typical dough, so you do have to be somewhat careful when maneuvering it. And you will notice that you find little tears when you're putting it in the pan. And so 
it's quite easy actually to fix them as you just melt them together. You can see some of the tears there. Don't worry about it. You can just mush them together and it'll be fine. Trust me. Trust me. So here's my miniature butcher's knife, which I'm using to trim away the excess around the top of the pie. Now, if you had extra filling, it would be a great opportunity to take a cupcake pan and actually put the little scraps in there and uh, make little mini tarts, which is something I didn't do because, uh, well, I just wanted pie. So that's what I did. Here I'm rolling out the top, and that's, again, going to be the same consistency as the bottom. And it's an irregular shape, but I'm going to trim it. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Now I'm going to mix the... Uh, take the brown sugar. We're going to mix that into that. We're going to add the spice, a little... Uh, was that ground cinnamon and a little bit of ground ginger. Throw that in there, like so. Give it a nice mix. Mm -hmm. Really, it looks terrible, I gotta be honest with you. But it smells wonderful. Alright, with that mixed together, we'll add that right into the pan. And a little pie pan. I preheated the oven to 425, and we'll let that, once that gets to the right temperature, We'll pop it in. So then for fun, I cut up some strawberries just to put around the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna crimp these down just a little bit, kind of make a, a lip. Depending on how much filling you have, you can adjust how you want your edge to be. But I like to have a little thicker, that sort of rim crust on there. So we have that. And then what I'm going to do is so my pizza cutter. I'm going to cut out some strips here. Set you aside. I love using a pizza cutter for cutting dough. It's just one of those things that just works smoothly and quickly and it's pretty effortless. You can also use it for pasta. That's another, well, that would be another episode for another time. But I'm making an abstract design on this. I'm not concentrating on making a, something perfect or uh, uniform in any way. If you wanted to, you'd simply roll the dough out just a little bit differently, longer, and then trim off the sides and then be able to make perfect strips that way. And you could do a nice little Betty Crocker kind of pie. But I'm kind of going for the Van Halen guitar thing here. And uh, that's <laughs> it'll, it'll work. That's all that matters. So I've left a few spaces and a few things open so you can kind of see. I'm not going to tilt it too much because I'm... And it's a slightly abstract design. It's not absolutely pro, but you know, that's not what I do for work. So let's pop it in the oven and see what happens. <laughs> so after the first 20 minutes of baking, what I like to do, after it crisps up a little bit, but before the last half hour at 325, I make, uh, I take a take an egg and I beat that out of it and then I add a little honey and then I cover the top of it. Now you can do this before it, but what happens is that if you put it on after it bakes up a little bit, it kind of soaks in a little better. So I'm just gonna liberally coat. And I just like I said, just regular organic honey and an egg, free range egg. And just coat the top of it like so and at this point the oven's cooling down to the 325 where it'll stay for the next half hour or worse until it gets nice and golden brown once everything's covered it'll be fantastic okay I think I got it I don't know what I'll do with the rest of the egg but eh. all right let's put it in the oven oh it's probably pretty hot anyway just kidding all right back in the oven see you in a few 
let's see what we have. Yeah, but buddy, the bottle. Oh my god, it smells fantastic. Ow, ow, ow. Oof. So there you have it, folks. Plumber's Rhubarb Strawberry Pie. I hope it tastes as good as it smells. I'm thinking it does. I'll check back with you later and tell you if it's any good. Thank you for watching Trailer Gourmet. My name is John High Street, and I will see you next time doing something else completely bizarre. Ciao.